Hello, Pray and Share Warriors. How are y'all doing tonight? I am doing great. It's kind of a sad day. So I thought we would um, take a break from our study on Psalms and just talk about September the 11th, 2001. Where were you? I know where I was. Where were you? Do you remember? Remember that time? There's like several generations that weren't even born. But I remember that day, parts of that day, very vividly. And I'm going to share that with you tonight. And um, I'm going to read a share that I did today called um, I Was There. Talking about God being there in the midst of what happened. So anyway, uh, we're going to pray first. And I'm going to either read the Beatitudes or Matthew 5. I haven't quite decided yet. I um, just felt really compelled to just share. And ask for some of you to share too. Your experience of 9-11-2001. And um, what we experienced afterwards, too, because that was quite an experience, too. So let's just pray for uh, people, people that are mourning today. They're reminded of this date. Of course, they mourn every day, but this is an anniversary date. And so that just brings it back to their memory more. So let's just pray for all of them, all of our service men's and women's families that gave their sacrifice on the battlefield in either Iraq or Afghanistan or somewhere in between. Let's pray for them too because they wouldn't have had to go to war if it wasn't for this tragedy that happened in New York. So let's just go to God and pray for these and uh, remember them today. I've been praying off and on all day. I've been listening to other people's stories. Glenn Beck had a really good story today, a remembrance, and um, I highly recommend people to go and listen to that. Well, let's go ahead and pray now. God, we just thank you, God, that you are on your throne and you're in control in that day of that great tragedy, God. On September the 11th of 2001, you were there with so many. You were there when they took their last breath. You were there when they escaped. You were there, God. You were there with the first responders that came to help. Many of them did not ever leave again. God, we just lift up these families today to you. And we just pray, God, that you would give them a peace and a comfort and strength, God, and that they would feel your presence, and they would know that their family member was not alone, that you were there with them, and you took many to their forever home that day. God, we remember the families of the people that crashed the airplane to keep it from flying on to Washington to hit our capital that day. God, we remember those families. We want to pray for those families, too. And for the families that were involved in the airplane that crashed into the Pentagon on the same day, God, so much tragedy in one day. We want to pray that for those families, too, for peace, comfort, and strength. That they would feel your presence today and that they would feel the arms and they would see the hands and feet of Jesus and the loving compassion of Jesus and others, God, today and every day. That they would remember, God, that there will be a reunion for many of them with their family members. And that it will be a glorious day. God, we just pray. We praise you, God, because you are the great I am and you are the great Jehovah. And you knew before that that day was coming. And through the Holy Spirit, you shared with some people not to go that day that were supposed to be there. 
God, we just pray for those families too. We pray for all these families. We pray for all the leaders that had to carry that burden. Um, the mayor of New York, uh, the governor of New York, that had to carry that big burden for so long, God, the many, many months that followed where people did not know where their family members were. They were just among the missing. All the many people that went and did the recovery, God, we, we pray for them. We pray that you would bless them for their hard work in recovering these people. God, we just pray for your protection. We pray for nothing like this to happen ever again in our country. For us to be so blindsided by evil that we just did not even think that anyone was capable to do such a tragic thing on our soil. God, we just pray that you could unite this country once again. It was united on September the 12th. We were all united against terrorism on September the 12th and going forward. But God, this country, as you know, has a lot of sin and unrepentant sin in it, God. We just pray that you would forgive us of that unrepentant sin, God that you would help us to draw closer and closer to you every day. That the lost in our country, God, that you would open their eyes and their ears to the truth, that you would allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus so they could be saved. God, we pray for a Jesus movement that cannot be stopped in our country. Just that the name of Jesus is proclaimed in every corner of our country. God, we also pray for all the prodigals to come back to you, for them to repent, for them to return to you, and for their relationship with you to be made whole. God, we pray for all the disasters that are going on all different places. There are people that are out on the streets, God. They are so opposed to van vaccine mandates, God. They are so opposed to their liberties being taken from them. We pray for the people in Australia, God. We pray for freedom for them because they have no freedom right now. Their government is telling them when and what and where to go. Many of them are headed for camps, quarantine camps, God. We just pray that you would be with these people. We pray that you would protect your children, God. And we pray that during this time of tragedy and uncertainty and just exactly what Jesus said would be happening in the end days in Matthew 24, God. We just pray that you would give us your guidance and wisdom. And we pray that you would help us to stay close to Jesus because he is the only one. He is the only way to you in heaven. And God, we just pray that um, many, many this year would be added to the kingdom. And we pray, God, that even the Muslims in Afghanistan would be saved. We pray that they would hear the truth, God, and that they would come to Jesus and accept him as their Savior. I know that's a big ask, but God, only you know hearts and minds, and only you are the righteous judge. And only you know, God, when evil has gone so far that it can't get back to you. And we don't know that, so we just just like you sent your son to die for every one of us, for everyone in the whole entire world, we are believing that the whole entire world has the choice of salvation, just like it was given to us. And we praise you and thank you, God. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, well, that was a different prayer.
Okay, well, this is what I shared today on Facebook and uh, on my story today on Facebook. And it's a video called I Was There. And we used to show this, we used to listen to this video on either Heroes Night or Heroes Weekend. Some some years we would do Heroes Weekend. Some years we would just do one night. But every year at the Promise, I don't know whether they did it this year or not, we have this. We set aside this time to honor our veterans, our active military, the first responders, um, era evac, all all of the first responders, police, police SWAT, all the branches of the military, all what we call our heroes. And uh, I do remember where I was when this happened. I do. I was in Walnut Springs. And I was um, watching TV. I was getting ready for work. And I was watching TV. And they were talking about the first tower had been hit by the plane. And they were talking about how bad it was. And they were talking about they thought it was just a little bitty plane. And they were, you know, of course, very overwhelmed and very distressed at that. But as I was watching the coverage of what had happened, I saw in real time, I saw the second plane hit. And it just blew me away. I just couldn't believe what I was seeing. And I thought, we're under attack. And so then, you know, you just start having these helpless feelings of, well, what's coming next? And then later that day, a plane hit the Pentagon. And later that day, um, a plane crashed because of brave people on that plane that would not let them finish their mission. They crashed the plane. I think that was Flight 93. Uh, close to Pittsburgh, I'm not sure. Anyway, so this is what else I wrote. I remember the fear after all the planes hit, the one at the Pentagon and the one that the brave people on board crashed, headed to the Capitol. I remember going to work at Promise Productions, Inc. and feeling like, what's next? It was such a sad year knowing so many died Many were still missing. Many were missing for months. I don't know whether they ever found everybody. I don't know. They were missing so long. They were looking for people for so long. I, I don't remember that part. And so many families and friends' lives were changed so quickly, like in an instant. I remember that America came together as one united in prayer. And many were saved after this tragedy. Our churches were filled. Our churches were full. I remember that so many men and women went to Afghanistan and Iraq to fight the war of terror. I remember that many of our brave men and women paid the ultimate sacrifice for our freedom. I remember many of our brave men and women came back emotionally and physically changed by this war every day. Like their, their lives will never be the same. I will never forget. So what was your experience? So I'm asking people to put it in the comments. And I did that on Facebook, but I didn't have any comments. Because I don't think that people read everything. Maybe I should have put it at the top. I don't know. And then I put hashtag 911. Hashtag never forget. Hashtag 20 years later. Hashtag pray all day. Unite with me in prayer today for all that still mourn and remember this sad day like it was yesterday. Matthew 5, 4. 
So I thought I would read the Beatitudes. I have them right here on my desk. I like this little plaque. The writing is a little bit small. But blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. So a lot of people are mourning. They're mourning all over the place. They're mourning all over the world. They are in mourning today. It is a sad day. And I don't feel like we have as much freedom as we did on that day. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So well, these are Jesus' words at the Sermon on the Mount. These are his words. And I think I'm going to read the rest of Matthew. And I'm sorry that I was late tonight again. I got on here and I thought, I need to adjust this camera that I do my YouTube video on. And my hair is red. My hair is red on this other camera. I don't know. It never stays adjusted. I think I'm going to have to get me a better camera to do that on. I got me a new computer and I thought, oh, this is going to be a better camera, but it's absolutely not. Okay, well, we read the Beatitudes. Let's read past the Beatitudes. Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely, falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Okay, so from there he just kind of leaves the Beatitudes. And he starts talking about all kinds of things. There's all kinds of things in Matthew 5. So you are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Do not think that I came to destroy the law of the prophets. I did not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For assuredly, I say to you, till heaven and earth pass away, one jot or one tittle will by no means pass from the law till it is all fulfilled. Whoever therefore breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches men so shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does and teaches them, he shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I say to you that unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. You have heard... It was said to those of old, you shall not murder, and whoever murders will be in danger of the judgment. But I say to you that whoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment, and whoever says to his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of the council. But whoever says, you fool, shall be in danger of hellfire. 
Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar and there remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go your way. First be reconciled to your brother and then come and offer your gift. Agree with your adversary quickly while you are on the way with him, lest your adversary deliver you to the judge. The judge hand you over to the officer and you be thrown into prison. Assuredly, I say unto you, you will by no means get out of there till you have paid the last penny. You have heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you that whoever looks at a woman to lust for her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye causes you to sin, pluck it out and cast it from you. For it is more profitable for you that one of your members perish than for your whole body to be cast into hell. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and cast it from you. For it is more profitable for you that one of your members perish than for your whole body to be cast into hell. Furthermore, it has been said, whoever divorces his wife, let him give her a certificate of divorce. But I say to you that whoever divorces his wife for any reason except sexual immorality causes her to commit adultery, and whoever marries a woman who is divorced commits adultery. Again, you have heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not swear falsely, but shall perform your oaths to the Lord. But I say to you, do not swear at all, neither by heaven, for it is God's throne, nor by the earth, for it is his footstool, nor by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. Nor shall you swear by your head, because you cannot make one hair white or black. But let your yes be yes, and your no be no, for whatever is more than these is from the evil one. You have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I tell you not to resist an evil person. But whoever slaps you on your right cheek, turn the other to him also. If anyone wants to sue you, take away your tunic. Let him have your cloak also. And whoever compels you to go one mile with him, go one mile, go with him too. Give to him who asks you, and from him who wants to borrow from you, do not turn away. You have heard that it was said, You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies, bless those who curse you, do good to those who hate you, and pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you, that you may be the sons of your Father in heaven. For he makes his sun rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the just and on the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what reward have you? Do not even the tax collectors do the same. And if you greet your brethren only, what what do you do more than others? Do not even the tax collectors do so. Therefore, you shall be perfect just as your Father in heaven is perfect. Wow, that was quite a sermon. There's so much in there. I think I forget every time I read it how much there is in there. And this was my daily reading for today, for this morning. But back to, blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. There are a lot of people mourning today, and probably every day. I'm sure it's just not one day a year. And uh, we just need to lift them up in prayer. And this is kind of interesting. I love, this is my study Bible that I'm using tonight. Um... This is Beatitudes for Women. Blessed are those who are poor in spirit. And then under character quality, it says humility. 
and the description says stripped of pride and sensitive to God's ministry in their behalf. And then it says those who mourn under character, character quality, sensitivity, under description, responsive to personal sinfulness and tender hearted toward one another. And it says those who are meek, character quality, meekness, demonstration of self-control and submission. Those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, character, quality, obedience, description, desire to hear and do the will of God. Those who are merciful, character, quality is compassion, description, outworking of faith to meet the needs of others. Those who are pure in heart, character, quality, holiness, lifestyle of set-apartness, including thoughts and actions. Those who are peacemakers, character, quality, reconciliation, forbearance instead of retaliation, forgiveness of wrongs, restoration of fellowship. Those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, character, quality, commitment, Steadfast loyalty that cannot be broken. Those who are reviled and persecuted. Character, quality, patience, description, willingness to endure suffering. And there's also scripture references over there too. I thought that was interesting. I love this study Bible. I find something interesting every time I read it. All right. Well, I think it is time to do a salvation message. Now, I have my blessed, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Tonight to Psalm thirty-three, twelve. 12. I felt kind of uh, like dressing patriotic. Because I do love this country. And I care about this country, but I see this country on a slippery slope of evil. And we need to get back to God being our Lord, one nation under God. We need to get back to those values. Let's see, how do we want to do our salvation message? Be good. I may read the scripture too. Second Chronicles seven fourteen. Let's read that first. I really I did not plan tonight. As you can tell, I'm just kind of all over the place. I used to read Second Chronicles last year every night. Started. This was the scripture that started it. Okay. I would actually read 14 and 15 when I would read it. When I would read it. Okay. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. Now my eyes will be open and my ears attentive to prayer made in this place. And so as a nation, we need to humble ourselves and pray. And we need to seek God's face. We need to turn from our wicked ways. And then God can forgive us and he can heal our land. But until we come humbly and we pray and we seek his face and we do turn, turn from our wicked ways. There are a lot of wicked ways going on in our country. There's a lot of corruption. There's a lot of deceit. There's a lot of um, blasphemy against God and against Jesus and against the Holy Spirit. There's just a lot. 
There's just a lot. And you can name all the sins, but in God's eyes, sin is sin. And anything that God thought was sin in the Old Testament, he still it's still sin to him. So we do need to step away from those wicked ways in our country. Okay, so this I got at uh, YC with the youth the last year that we went in 2019. And the focal verse was 2 Chronicles 7.14. So this is a very short, very short salvation message. It's the ABCs and like a super short prayer. Do you know the ABCs of life? God created you to experience a full life here on earth, John 10.10. 10, and he wants you to spend eternity with him. 2 Peter 3, 9. To become a Christian, you simply need to admit you need a Savior. We've all disobeyed God. We've sinned and earned separation from God, which is death. Romans 3, 23 and Romans 6, 23. No matter how good you are or how hard you try, you can't work your way into heaven. Ephesians 2, 8 through 9. The B, believe in Jesus Christ. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. John three sixteen. The C, commit your life to Christ. You can believe in your mind that Jesus exists, but to have a relationship with him, you must ask him to be your Lord here on earth and your Savior eternally. Romans 10, 9 says that if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So this is a super, super short prayer. But just repeat after me if you want to receive Jesus as your Savior. Jesus, I have sinned. Thank you for dying for me so I could be forgiven. I trust you alone for eternal life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Super short, to the point, but if you said that prayer and if you received Jesus as your Savior, then the angels in heaven are rejoicing and your name is being written in the Lamb's Book of Life. You are now saved, sealed, and sanctified by God through Jesus Christ, His Son. And if you want to grow closer to God and have a better relationship with God, then read his word every day and pray and find some praise music. There is all kinds of praise music that you can listen to. Maybe you want to pr praise through poetry, whatever. Just spend some time with God every day. Every day, spend some time with him. All right. Well, I think that's all I came here to do. Um, I feel like I'm leaving something out. Maybe I normally do more scripture, but tonight was just a little bit different. I did testimony instead of scripture. So I'm going to read the um, God's blessing from Numbers 6, 24 through 26. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. We all need peace, but we need peace through Jesus. We don't need any false peace that's not true peace. True peace comes through Jesus. All right. Well, I'm going to pray again, and I'm going to get off of here. I've got to go and uh, fix Seth something to eat for dinner. 
already ate. I just kind of snacked tonight. But I need to go fix him some dinner. And um, I just hope that um, some of you will share your stories from 9-11 and maybe some of your testimony. I know it was a very unsettling day for me because I just didn't know what the future was going to hold. I didn't see us sitting here 20 years later. Um, I saw a total invasion coming, but praise God that wasn't his plan. I'm thankful that wasn't his plan. Where I worked, though, we we lost a lot of ticket sales that day in the going forward days, too, because people just, they were afraid. Everyone was afraid. But it's okay. We're here today. And we need God to intervene now. We need people to come to Jesus while they still have time. Because there's nothing that Jesus said in Matthew 24 that is not happening right now. You say, yeah, but we're not being persecuted. No, we're not being persecuted yet. But there are Christians that are being persecuted right now. And there are Christians in Afghanistan that are being hunted down. There's a whole church that got taken out last week. It's sad, but it's true. But everybody needs Jesus. Everybody needs salvation. And so we just keep sharing God's truth and we keep sharing the gospel. And as Christians, that's our job. And our rewards that will last forever are in heaven. They're in our forever home. So the things that we have, even I like my new computer, but I'm not taking it with me. You know, nothing that I have here am I taking with me. So we have to learn to let go of the things of the world and to embrace the things of heaven. Because those are the only things that will last forever. All right, I'm going to pray. Sounds like my husband just got home. All right, God, we just thank you again, God. We thank you that you're our creator, our sustainer, our provider, our protector. You are our shelter in the storm. You are our strength and our refuge, God. God, I just pray for all the people that our morning, God, I just pray that you would give them peace, comfort, and strength, God. That you would um, give them an assurance of where their family members are, their friends. God, I just pray that you would heal our land. That you would eradicate this disease that has taken over our country and the whole world. That you would um, protect our freedoms that seem to be slipping away from us more and more every day. But God, more importantly, that you would give us the boldness to go out to share your truths every day and to share the gospel of Jesus, to invite people into your kingdom, to... Um, Help us to show everyone that you want none to perish. That you want all to be in heaven with you. We just pray that you would keep us close to Jesus. Because he is the only path back to you. We just pray that you would give us strength. Encourage to move forward in our Christianity journey every day, God. 
and that in all things that we would glorify you. I pray for Josie and her family, her brothers, her sisters, her children and their children. God, I pray for blessings and protection and provision, God. I miss my friend that doesn't come here anymore, but I know she's been sick, and I know that she went back to work, God, and I know that she's probably tired. I know that she'll come back when she can. And God, I just pray for all other families, anyone that watches this, I pray that you would bless their family abundantly and that you would bless, that you would protect them and provide for them, God, that you would show them the way. I pray for my family too. I pray for protection and blessings and provision. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, we'll pray and share words. It is time for me to get off of here. Have an awesome rest of your evening and an awesome tomorrow, which is Sunday. We will be at church tomorrow. And if you are looking for a church, then come visit our church. We go to the Walnut Springs Baptist Church. Sunday school starts at 930 and church starts at 11. And our pastor preaches and teaches out of the Word of God, our Sunday school classes too. So just come join us if you want. And uh, much love and cyber hugs till I see you again. Good night.